Hello everybody, welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. You know what's even better? Spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. All right, today I'm reviewing the first of two wines from a winery I reviewed at the end of last year, or the end of 2019, Quinto do Amial. I did a very detailed history of the winery in that video. I won't go through all the details in this video. I'll just kind of give you the highlights. I'm also cheating by taking my original script from that episode and just cutting out the important bits or leaving in the important bits. Hey, why repeat my work twice? All right, as I mentioned last time in the first time I did this, these wines are from a winery that's relatively unknown outside of Portugal, Quinta do Amial. This historic 1710 estate in Ponte de Lima in Portugal's Vino Verde DOC is widely credited with putting collectible cellar-worthy Loreto-based Vino Verde on the map. And speaking of maps, that's my cue to pull up Gurgle, Gurgle Earth. How about Google Earth? Yep, uh, it should be the same video I had last time. If not, I made a new one. Anyway, Vino Verde is not a grape variety. It is a DOC for the production of wine in northern Portugal. The name means green wine, but translates as really young wine, with the wine being released three to six months after the grapes are harvested. This area is known for quaffable white wines, but they also make red and rosé, and they are usually consumed soon after bottling. In its early years of production, Vino Verde was known to have a slight effervescence, which came from the malolactic fermentation taking place in the bottle. Today, most Vino Verde producers no longer follow this practice with the slight sparkle being added by actually artificial carbonation. So the white wines are usually lemon or straw colored, lower alcohol, and are made from the local grape varieties Alvarinho, Loreto, Arinto, Trajadura, Aveso, and Azal, plus many others. These are just the main grapes that are used. So out of these, maybe Alvarinho sounds familiar, it should. North of the border in Spain, it is known as Albarinho. Loreto, however, yes, it is a key grape used in Vino Verde. The name derives from Lauro or Laurel in Portuguese. The estate was purchased in 1990 by the father of the most recent owner, Pedro Araujo. In 1999, Pedro released his first wine, Amiel Loreto. Wines from the grape were thought to be a serviceable, quaffable wine to be drunk within six months. However, Araujo felt that Loreto could make superb wines that can age over a period of a dozen years or more. So from the beginning, Amial has been a winery that has practiced sustainability in the vineyards and minimal intervention in the winery. No herbicides or chemical fertilizers are used in the vineyards, and biodiversity, such as the controlled growth of selected weeds, is encouraged. In 2019, Arojo decided the time was right to hand over the reins of the winery to someone that could continue his legacy. He sold to Esperal. He saw them as a company with shared values and an international presence. José Luis Morea da Silva, head winemaker over at Quinta do Mursas, assumed the same duties at Amial. Esperam is soil mapping the vineyards and cataloging existing biodiversity and looking at how they can adapt to climate change. All right, now that I gave you the Cliff's Notes version, here are the stats for the wine. All right, the 2020 Esperam Quinta do Amial Bico Amarelo, or Yellow Beak. The suggested retail price is $12. Vino Verde is a blend of Loreto, Alvarino, and Aveso. It's hand harvested. It's whole cluster fermentation. There's least contact of four to six months in stainless. The alcohol is 11.5%. The total acidity is 7.0 grams per liter. The pH is 3.17. And the residual sugar is 1.5 grams per liter. All right, let's get into the wine. I remember liking this last time, so I'm sure I will like it again. That pH. I don't know why I just did that. I'm not drinking out of there. pH 3.1, is that, is that what it was? I have to look that up again. 
It's going to be really intense. So um, I, I, I had a whole show or I had a show where I talked a little bit more about um, acidity and pH and all that. So pH is the intensity, how much you notice the acidity. Um, and then your TA or your total acidity is the actual acidity. But pH in general, the lower the pH, usually the higher the actual acid is. But it's also, um, yeah, 3.17. 3 it's also a um, uh, indicator of how strong you taste it. All right, so I talked about the color. Yeah, it's got that light straw color. Um, there isn't that much of a greenness to it. And uh, I mean, the problem with uh, determining if there's any like little carbonation in there or not is that using, using something like a Corvin, you're already going to aerate the wine. So you're always going to have bubbles. Um, maybe a little bit later as I taste it, I'll see if there's any, any residual carbonation, <clears throat> residual carbonation in there. All right, let's check it out. So it's a, <clears throat> call it a moderate intense, moderate intensity on the, on the, on the nose. I can, I smell it up here. There's um, definitely youthful. There's a freshness to this. We've got uh, orange. We've got uh, a little bit of lemon too, some peach, white flowers. I mean, this should be very much like drinking Riospicious, okay? I do get, um, I do get this, oh, not quite a creaminess, but I get like this <clears throat> roundness. It's kind of hard to describe this on the, 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 the nose. I almost slipped a little bit there. On the nose, um, yeah, and there's like this a little bit of lime. Hopefully I cut out the cough there. Yeah, a little bit of lime to this. And there's like a little bit of, honestly, it kind of smells like rice candy. Like the Botan rice candy, which is weird. But there's a, maybe it's a, there's a floral aspect. Maybe it's kind of like that, almost like a perfumed quality. Yeah, let's check it out. Oh, yeah. That acid. I'm an acid head. Yeah, that that unusual aroma really carried through to the palate. We'll get to that in a second. Um, orange, lemon, lime. Really tart in nature. It's probably because of the acidity, but the quality of fruit really tastes tart. Little orange, little white flowers in there. There's also a perfumed quality to it. Um, not like, not soapy, but like a perfume quality to it. Um, a little bit of that rice candy type of thing. I'm trying to eliminate my ums here. Sorry. It's been, you know, it's been like probably three or four months have actually been on camera. So the Lee's aging, I think it's being used as a substitute for mallow in the sense that I think it's, it's softening things a little bit. You get a little more roundness, but the acidity is really there. Like my mouth is watering a lot and I'm digging it. So you have this with some really like some food that can really uh, uh, handle the acid, stand up to the acid is what I'm looking for. Your usual stuff, you know, your, your white meats like chicken, pork. Uh, you can even do this like, you know what? I don't know exactly when you're seeing this episode. It, it, it could be near the holidays, but this could be a really good wine to kind of start off the holidays with. So if you're having a traditional like turkey dinner type of thing, sweet potatoes, uh, uh, freaking, uh, what's it called? Stuffing. Your salads, especially if you had like say a spinach salad with pecans and like little honey mustard, this would go well with that. I think this would be a great way to get the palate going you know, get your juices flowing. You know, everyone's going to be hungry for the for the for the main course. This is like your first your first course wine. It could be with your charcuterie if you have one. You maybe have like a maybe doing like a fruit salad type of thing. This could be a really good wine for that. I have no idea when this is going to be out, especially because I'm recording all these out of order. I I recorded them pretty much as I pulled them out of the fridge, as I was doing my bottle shots. That way, you know the. The last wine is the last wine I pulled, and so the temperature is still good. I finished it. It's good. I think you should buy it. All right, well, that's gonna do it for the wine. If you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe, and then tell your friends. And until next time, oh, I drank all my Alvarino, but have some, Al I'm sorry, drank all my Vino Verde, so drink some Vino Verde.